on a Friday night here at the Exus County Cody Arena. Ready to see our main event where activity is a big note here. Juan Carlos Payano just fought a few weeks ago. Jundi Marone has fought just once nine months ago in the last three years. Both men 28, both men unbeaten and willing to take on the challenge of facing each other here in 10 rounds among these Bantamweights. And there is Jundi Marone. 5'6", came in at 116 and a half. Veteran Southpaw from the Philippines. I told you he has struggled with inactivity. He's only fought once in the U.S. And that's his only fight other than the limited competition he fought in the Philippines. And there is Juan Carlos Payano, who had over 500 amateur bouts. An Olympian in 04 and 08 from the Dominican Republic, a gold medalist in the Pan Am Games. And he checked in at just under 117 pounds, five foot five, fighting out of Miami now. Teddy Atlas brings us the fight plan brought to you by Corona Extra. Thomas Edison helped bring electricity and light into our homes. He was also responsible for so many inventions. So I thought, what better place to invent a fight plan than in his library? So, hit the switch. No, no don't hit anything over here. Both fighters are southpaws, lefties. Marone, Piano. Now, Edison loved his gadgets. Both these fighters, they love their left hands. They're always looking for it. Marone, to the head. And Piano, me, to the body. So look for Piano. He likes to give a little ground and get a little. So what he'll do is step out a little bit, get Marone to reach, bang, left uppercut to the body, right here. If he does that, well, hit the circuit breaker. Because that can disconnect the oxygen to your lungs. It can hurt. Especially if uh, you're not tight there. All right, if Marone went into the laboratory, what could he invent to get a win? Nothing. He already has it. This, the left hand, the power punch, his favorite punch to the head. I'll be Marone, Southpaw again, Piano, Southpaw. We already talked about Piano. He likes to slide out and throw that left uppercut to the body, but he keeps his right hand a little low. So if you're Marone, what do you do? Get him to slide out a little too soon. Paint him a little bit, get him to slide in that bang. Beat him with that straight left hand, your power punch. Get full extension. You do that in prep zone. We've invented the phonograph. There'll be plenty of noise while they're cheering for you and announcing your name, the winner. You like music? Yes, I do. Can you sing? No, but I'm like No, please song. don't. Thank <laughs> you. Good. Yeah, I think Saul would break that phonograph. Uh, great looking place, Edison's historic lab there. Yeah, it is. It's uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Quite a man. Randy Newman is our referee for Payano and Marone, scheduled for 10. Hey, gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules of the state as they've been thoroughly gone over. I want you to remember two things. Of course, I want you to obey my commands. But number one, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the bell. So I'll tell you early on that Marone, yes, indeed, he's been involved in head clashes. He has a technical draw because of a head clash. And he was cut over his right eye in his career. Remember, fought in May 2009, then had a three-round knockout in September of 2012. That's it. Those three rounds between now and going back to 09. See, I'm so glad that you touched on that because that might be the most important part of the fight. Just like we talked in the cult feature about Diaz being vulnerable early to Vincente because of his inactivity, same thing here. There's a danger zone early for Marone because of that inactivity. And you touched on it. Plenty of gaps of that inactivity in his career. Like you said, nine months since he was last in the ring. But then, before that fight, he was off three years and four months. Also, he has gaps of two years and one month and one year and four months. So, lots of gaps. Danger zone maybe early on. 
And Piano wants to jump on him a little bit, but that's really not Piano's way. He likes to give a little ground and look to counter for the most part. He just did with a left hand. Talk about amateur experience. How about 523 amateur fights for Piano? Two Olympics represented Dominican Republic in 2004 and 2008. Those are the kind of numbers when you start talking 500 plus that we would see with a Cuban amateur or an old era Soviet or Iron Curtain laden amateur. Very good point. Because they didn't have the option of turning pro. No, they didn't. They didn't have professional boxing and those regimes, those countries that let them with Laswell Pap. Exactly. In the 1950s. Dictatorship, communist countries back Tail in those Stevens. days. Yes, exactly. They could not turn pro unless, of course, they escaped, got out of there, came to the United States. Otherwise, they could not turn pro, and you'd see them in two, three Olympics. And you'd accumulate, as you just said, many, many amateur fights. Maybe too many sometimes. Too, sometimes you can get burnt out in the amateurs with that many fights. A lot of miles on the old domino. Payano doing Marone a favor here based on what we were talking about. There's blood coming from the corner of his right eye. Yeah, I think he is because that inactivity of Marone, you know, he's rusty early, maybe a little doubtful early. You get on him, take advantage of it. You can't take advantage of it if you're staying away. And there's a cut in the corner of the right eye of Payano. Payano was cut over his right eye four fights ago, and he's cut there again. We'll get confirmation from the commission here ringside as to whether that was confirmed as a clash of heads or caused by a punch. The referee has said the cut was from a punch. We disagree. The pictures tell us right here that there's a clash of heads. Watch right here, you're gonna see the heads come together right in that spot where the blood is, where the cut is, in the corner of the right eye of Piano. This might be a good time for boxing to use replay. You know, interestingly enough, and, and good job by the alternate referee sitting ringside here, because Sparkle Lee, Randy Newman first said, you know, as a punch, Sparkle Lee said, I saw it as a clash. Uh, she gave him some counsel. And I believe we'll get clarification with the ringside commission, but I think they're probably going to go with that being a clash of heads based on what they saw ringside here. Yeah, why wouldn't you? I mean, you have the technology. You have the benefit of seeing it. And you, you got one of your colleagues sitting right here. Yeah, and she saw it, and you don't have to guess at it. You know, guess that it was a punch, guess that it was a head. No, you look at the replay. It's available to you. It's a clash. Get it right. So hopefully they do get it right that it was a clash of heads. And we said before the fight started, in the first round that Marone has been involved and you can see why Joe he comes in there he leans forward his upper body gets ahead of his lower body that's a no-no that's the wrong way to do it you're supposed to have your legs up there and have your upper body with your legs not ahead of your legs and Marone's been involved in head clashes before and because of that style because of that that flaw in his technique we have Bernardo over, I see him over talking to the commission at ringside, trying to get clarification about headbutt or punch. But right now, Mayano, the busier man, and again, doing it his way. He gives a little to get a little, gives a little ground, gets you to reach in a little bit and does that. Counters you. That man didn't do a great job in the corner there, the right eye of Mayano dripping already. Dr. Richard Hill working that corner. Right, Mickey punch. Ward is the assistant in that corner, Herman Casado. Well, Mickey was good at creating cuts. I don't it know if sure he's was. that great at closing them, but hopefully the doctor will do a better job. So there's the counter punching. I mean, that is the perfect example of pure counter punching. Piano waited for the wide punch from Marone, and it was wide from too far away. Piano made him miss, and then made him pay. And that's what Piano's all about. You know, he's got good eyes, he sees it coming, 
He's got a good field of vision. Just look at him. He's concentrating really with those peepers. Looking for spots. If you wait too long on him, you're a little slow. He'll beat you to the mark. But otherwise, he waits for that. Wait for you to miss. And then he's going to look to come back with something. Reminder, you can head over to our Facebook page and join in the live scoring with Teddy Atlas. Kendall Holt sitting ringside here for Friday Night Fights. Of course, we saw him in a big spot earlier this year. You know, one of the all-time greats. Talking about Olympic glory, 1984 gold. Meldrick Taylor, 1990, that classic with Julio Cesar Chavez with two seconds left in the 12th round. Yeah, Taylor winning the fight, but taking a lot of punishment down the stretch. So game, Philadelphia fighter. And then, as you said, Chavez stopping him. The referee, Richard Steele, deciding to stop it. And a lot of controversy about that hey, stoppage. Hey, bro, two bro. seconds Don't before do that again. the end. Is he head on two or three scorecards, if I recall? Classic showdown. <laughs> Looks like a reversal of roles for a second early here. Don't know who's who. Maron, usually the guy walking in a little crude, sometimes a little wide. A little available sometimes, but Piano, the guy giving ground oh, 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 counter boxing, oh, oh, oh. counter punching. Marone now comes out doing a little boxing. All of a sudden, it's Marone looking for spots, making a little adjustment. One of the adjustments for Marone, Joe, should be go to the body. Piano, you have a guy using his legs, a guy who's a little bit tricky defensively. Go downstairs. Both southpaws here, as we talked about in the fight plan. So usually a southpaw has an edge going into a fight because the orthodox fighter doesn't usually see southpaws that much. The edge is negated here. Both guys looking into a mirror. Teddy, last round you saw Bernardo, the news hound over there with the commission. Let's see what he came up with. Bernardo. Joe, Randy Newman, after the end of round one, told Commissioner Aaron Davis it was a punch that caused the cut. Then, after the advice of the, the auxiliary referee hey, hey, here, hey, hey, Sparkle hey. Lee, he walked over after the end of the second round and told the commissioner it's now by an accidental headbutt. So that changes the situation immensely. Okay, so it's officially going down, according to the commissioner, as a clash of heads to cut over the right eye. Listen, here's all I care about. I don't care about the right. rules. Just get it right. And they did. And use the information, use the equipment, in this case, the videotape, to get it right. Right now, the big advantage, forget about counter punching. The advantage for me in this fight right now is Payano a little quicker. And he's still bleeding in the corner of that right eye, but a little quicker with his feet and with his hands. Marone, a little cement footed, a little on the slow side. Oh, Coming to the end of round three, these two unbeaten bantamweights clashing here in West Orange, New Jersey. There's a oh, he's hurt. stabbing left hand and then a sweeping right hand three. to the body, and he scores Four, the knockdown five, there in the six, final seconds seven, of round good. number three. And guess what? Hello, exactly ring. what we talked about in the fight plan. Hello, Piano, Piano slid out a little bit. He likes to slide out, look for that yeah, left uppercut. Okay? And he gave a little yeah, space with the right hand think? down. And Marone filled yeah, that space with the straight left hand. Watch. There, there it is. is. Exactly what we talked about in the fight plan. Marano, right hand down. I should say Piano leans over on that side. Stayed right in the path of it. Exactly. Then. The straight left hand did the job. And there it is. Full extension. Good extension by Marone on his power punch. The left hand. We talked to the fight plan. Both fighters like their left hand. Marone loves it to the head. Well, he's got to be happy right now. So Juan Carlos Piano hurt and goes down in the final seconds there of round three. So now Piano has two things to worry about. Having just been dropped and having a cut that has not been completely handled in a corner by Dr. Richard Hill. Now, Jundi Marone. 
See if he can come out and take advantage here. Oh, there's a sharp left hand by Payano. Well, and Piano, now he's on the attack. Well, Payano's still the quicker guy, feet and hands. So far, just one spot that has damaged him by Marone. But look for that left hand. That's what is the calling card for Marone. That left hand to the head. And look for the opportunity for it. When Payano slips over to his left and gives a little too much space and keeps the right hand low. See, I like a guy if he's going to slip over. Just imagine this at home, you guys. If Payano's going to slip to his left, be close where there's no space. And then you can punch back, and then Marone has to be... He has to be worried about something coming back. He's got to be defensive-minded. But if you slip, if you're Payano and you slip over to your left side, there's space. You're just hanging out there in the space. You're giving a wide-open alley to get caught by Marone. See, if you slip something, you're close, but there's no space to do anything. Right now, pretty simple. Payano getting off first, and again, a little quicker. Payano does it two ways, Joe. You know, he'll counter, he'll give him ground, he'll get the counter, a little warning here by the ref. He'll counter a little bit, but he'll also beat you to the mark if you're slow, if you're laying there, especially if you're not using a jab. And Marone, no jab, just laying there. There's a little setup there, a little low bend, and then, you know, jack in the box. That little right hook there. Let's see the impact that that knockdown had on the scorecards. Teddy 10 8 round makes it 28 28. Of course, you, the fan at home, can score along on Facebook. And we go by percentage of voting, obviously, in the run with the knockdown. Getting that oh, round oh, doesn't oh. show the 10 8 round, but two rounds right. to one would have the right. same score as point, Teddy. Referee doesn't want to lose control of this fight here. He's got to stay not in the action. You want to be out of the action, but close enough to get in there quickly if you need to be. So there's that low bend there. Low bend, it's a setup. It's to mesmerize Marone, get him looking at the bend, and then come out again out of that jack-in-the-box and catch him. If I'm in the corner, Marone, I'm saying, let's take advantage of that. When he's bending low, he can't do anything. Let's catch him on his way up. Let's not just look at him. <laughs> Listening into the corner, okay. that's brought to you by the U.S. Marine Corps. Bernardo's translating for us. Do you hear me? He's landing the hook under, on the body. Take a step back. Stay away from his straight right. That's the one he's with. Okay. I would disagree with that. That was the straight left he straight dropped left, him with. Yes. Obviously, south paws here, and it was the straight left as he dipped out to his left hand side and stayed in the path of the punch. Hey, that that's, came that's at the a bad sign when the corner's giving you wrong information, right? I mean, well, I, they're I used to fighting orthodox fighters, right? Yeah. So they say straight right, so yeah. straight left. Yeah. Yeah, go down the road a piece. Right. <laughs> About 20 miles later. Yeah. Where is this place? Exactly. I'd like to know if it's a left or right for my corner. If I'm in the it's ring like an and I'm doing something. Costello in the corner. Yeah, exactly. There. Who's on first? Right, I'm doing something as difficult as boxing. Darn right. I want to know, is it a left or a right? I think Marone, their corner should be concentrating on that move, that bend of Piano. You know, he bends and tries to surprise you, get you captured looking at the bend and then he comes up and tries to catch you with something where you're kind of mesmerized by looking at what the heck's this guy doing bending so low but Marone's seen it twice already if I'm in the corner I'm telling him you see that again you catch him when he's susceptible he's bending like that he can't do anything until he gets up catch him on the way up you can time that exactly Joe See, the right. thing that's hurting Marone really bad, you know, I've pretty much documented, and you can see with your eyes, that Payano's quicker. Right. Puts punches together a little better, a little bit fleeter on his feet. But Marone is allowing him to be quicker by not jabbing. He's really playing into the strengths of Payano, because look at Marone, he's just standing there, like a heavy bag. He's not using his jab 
to take some of this play away from Piano. You have to use your jab. You can't wait and think about it. While you're waiting and thinking about it, you get beat to the mark like that. There it is. You got to use your jab. There's just a little trip in there. You got to use your jab to put bugs on the windshield, like I like to say a lot of times. In other words, block the view of the guy in front of you. You know, don't allow Piano to have such a good view. He's got a good view right now. Yeah, he just had a three-punch combination that time. The right jab, the straight left, and then the right hook. Now he gets off a of one-two. Right hand straight low there. Teddy talk of blinding with the jab, the bugs on the windshield. And that's really what they need to do. There's there the low, but again, Marone does not take, take advantage. Take a step in and fire away. See if you can time it. Exactly. And he should be aware of it. That's the third time this tonight it's happened. Corner needs to do a better job with making their man aware of that and ready for that. Tonight's foolproof brunch of the night, Teddy, brought to you by Just For Men, Yennefel Vicente. And there you see it, the right uppercut by Vincente, and you see the opening because of that wide left hook by Diaz. Need to be taught not to throw a wide hook in front of your man, otherwise you get caught with a right hand. That time, a right uppercut. Get some new information concerning what happened with that cut over the right eye in round number one bernardo what can you offer joe they acknowledge that the tv replay showed that it was a headbutt but the rules here in new jersey don't allow for replay therefore they're going to go with the original call from referee randy newman there will there is a process of appeal in case it becomes an issue here in this fight but as of now it's back to a punch that caused the cut on Payan. Well, I, well, I love bureaucracy. Why well, make things complicated? Don't you love bureaucracy, just, Teddy? Just get it right. <laughs> you see it. You see what it is. Just do it. Just get it right. Use common sense. Oh, Teddy, not in the day and age of over officious bureaucracy. Why have that? You're right. It's a shame. Right now, it's a shame that we're wrong. <laughs> he's using the three. jab because he's behind on the scorecards, at least on mine, because he's not. Yeah, there's that low bend. Not quite as much, but like Piano, when he's low, he's hand touching himself a little bit. Malone should be letting those hands fly. See, no jab by Marone, so he gets beat to the mark. If the jab was coming from Marone, Piano has to go defensive instead of offensive. That's the key to the jab. When you're fighting a guy like Piano, he's moving a little bit. And right on target. The guys at Copy Box offer up the total jabs on the punch stats. Piano right. throwing 172 to Marone's 104, only landing nine is the Philippine. Right. Talk about Philippines, 15 right, of Marone. 16 fights have been in the Philippines. This is his second fight in the United States, and most of the fights for Piano have been in the Dominican Republic and Florida. So the guy used to fighting in the United States more is Piano. This is a step up for both guys tonight, you know, so both of these guys have been fed. A lot of soft competition getting to this point. So I wish more guys would do this. I wish we saw more 13 and 0 versus 15 and 1 1. It's good for the sport. Watch, watch what I've been talking about. Watch here as Piano bends really low. And what is Marone doing? Nothing. Watch, real low. Right there, there's an opportunity, I'd say, about a split second. And that's a lot of time in boxing to get off while he's down. Because when he's down low like that, He's basically vulnerable. He's handcuffed. He, he can't do anything till he gets up. 
and you could see that opportunity for Marone. It passed by the wayside. Ayano opens up the seventh here with a left choke. You know, it's funny because Marone's body language almost it acts as if Payano, you know, threw a feint there. He actually, his body goes back for a moment, just the opposite of what you're looking for him to do. There's a good offensive attack and a knockdown score by Juan Carlos Payano. Six, seven, eight. That's it. Let's go. Let's good go night. In here. Marone, first loss of his career. Payano stays unbeaten. And still down on the canvas is 28-year-old Jundi Marone as they have four ringside positions here, does the New Jersey Commission. So they are well-staffed to handle this situation. And they are tending to him there on the ring apron. See him moving his eyes as they were just talking to Jundi Marone. Yeah, he's conscious, he's alert. Right now, just at home for the concerned viewers, the medical people are doing their job. They're keeping Marone stable. Don't want him to move yet. They're asking him questions, asking him if he feels his extremities, if he's cognizant of what's going on. And then when they feel they've gotten the right answers and they've seen what they want to see, then they will get him up to the stool. But right now, the medical people are doing their job. Teddy, the one thing that we can say through all the years of handling situations like this is that the ringside physicians will take their time in this process. They want medical attention immediately, but they, they are slow in their approaches how they go about the process of handling the fallen fighter. And they look for certain things, and most ringside physicians are trained, especially equipped to handle this from a neurological standpoint. So you won't see them quickly get him to the stool until they feel good enough to do so. They look for movement in the extremities. They hand, And this is a good sign. Yeah, this is. is when they feel good enough where he can handle them being moved to the stool. They'll get him to the stool, and then EMTs will often enter the ring and take it from there. You know, they did it step by step, followed the procedure, the process, if you will. Kept them stable. Didn't let them move until they got the answers, until they saw what they needed to see. They saw, they heard, and now they have them up on the stool, and it's a good sight to see. And now we can talk about how Payano put him in that position. He did it with the left hand. We talked to the fight plan. Both these fighters like to use the left hand. Well, the left hand of Payano was the one that got it done. Let's show you how he accomplished it. It was impressive. And why does a punch land? Because an opportunity is given. There you saw Marone laying on his left side, just laying there right in the path of the straight left hand from the southpaw. Watch again. He shouldn't be laying there. I talked about it earlier, Joe, exactly that. There was space. He was given space laying on the side. Watch again. He lays over on his left side with space, space for the right hand, or I should say the southpaw left hand to be thrown and to connect. If you're going to lay over on the side, get close. Take that space away. Don't lay over on the side like that where you're right in the path of the punch. What you have to do is get close or weave your head back to the other side. He laid right over there in the alleyway of the power punch of Hayano. Let's check in with Bernardo. Bernardo? Just minutes ago, uh, the doctor told me that he was unconscious. Fortunately, he's doing a lot better now, so the danger point seems to be, have passed. They want to take him out by ambulance, and it seems like Marone and his team do not want to use the ambulance. We'll see where this all ends up. Let's make it official for Juan Carlos Payano. 
Ladies and gentlemen, referee Randy Newman calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, 39 seconds into round number seven. Your winner by knockout and still undefeated from Santiago, Dominican Republic, Juan Carlos Baby Pacquiao Payano. Juan Carlos Payano handing Jundi Marone the first loss of his career. He does so in spectacular fashion with the left hand to the temple. A knockout victory, 14-0 he is.